Welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange, everybody. I am here with Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to the show, man. Thank uh, you very much, though. My pleasure. If you haven't already, uh, check those out. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be on his show for the Right Project podcast, and uh, you might have seen those episodes floating around. I've promoted them, but also I found that if you uh, are a subscriber of this channel, those videos will just pop up. You'll just see Which them. is lovely for me. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> You, you've helped out a very small channel and a, a, a moderately sized podcast, which is very generous of you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. On it. I'm very excited about this topic. So, uh, but it's, this is all Matthew's baby. So I'm going to let him just, just take it away. And if, if you know, you're watching the show, you probably saw the title and the thumbnail. Yeah. So you're already excited, but let's jump into it. Yeah. So on the right project for a long time, I've been wanting to do a best of x thing list you know best of james bond movies or books based of best of james patterson best of spider-man i love spider-man he's my number one guy i've read all of spider-man i might have forgotten a few things i've also read all of x-men but those are my two main things and i've been for a while wanting to do a best of top 10 back and forth with someone else the problem is i don't know if anyone else has this problem I don't know anyone else who geeks out about Spider-Man as much as I do. Like, literally no one. If I had a Spider-Man trivia game, it'd just be me playing with myself. But then I thought, oh man, I think Sal is as big a Spider-Man geek as me, if not more so. So this seems like a wonderful uh, opportunity to do a, a crossover episode. So this one's going to air on Comic Pop Returns first, and then the audio will appear, appear over on Right Project sometime next week. That's right. And if you want to uh, check out that audio version, you can always go to the right uh, to MatthewLidgeru.com. It's got all the appropriate links uh, there. It's available in the comments down below. So check out that if you have a minute. Um, so, yeah, I I, uh, I looked at this from a perspective of like best slash best for me, like the favorites, yeah. you know, things that like really matter to me, the, mo the most like meaningful. But uh, I can definitely weigh in on those like those bests, because I think I, I think when you think about like if you Google best Spider-Man comics, you're probably going to find the same five. Yeah. And while I fully expect to see those uh, on this list, I also wanted to go a little bit outside the box just to kind of be like, hey, these are some other Spider-Man books that you may not have found that are equally excellent or just excellent because of our own kind of obsessive qualities that, uh, you know, understand the character. So, uh, but I'm excited to see how this is cross-referenced with like things that are, you know, considered to be some of the best absolutely and i'm really interested in seeing if there's even one in common because like there's something <laughs> like sixteen thousand books out there with spider-man's name on the cover yeah and that was it it was, wasn't all amazing it was just if it has spider-man's name on the cover fair game kind of thing. yeah that's fair um, yeah yeah for speaking of which were there any rules that you kind of we didn't talk about rules or anything like this did you self-impose anything with your list no 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 no. I, I i entirely went with things that were uh spider-man comics i guess i did have a couple of restrictions they had to be a, a comic book it had to be a spider-man comic book um but i also wouldn't have thought oh there's a excellent spider-man comic or one of the best spider-man comics within the pages of an avengers title or an x-men title so it, it just so happened that it ended up being a spider-man title um, but yeah, I, I, I certainly did find myself excluding titles just by accident, you know, like no web of Spider-Man's ended up on my list. <laughs> a, a few ended up on mine. So that's interesting. All right. All also, right. I don't know where you're at, but I went overboard with this. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a top 30 and okay. it's like if you double up one, I'm just going to slot that one out and bring it up kind of Love thing. it. Yeah. yeah, I was I was looking for like physicals because I I'm you know we're in the studio I have my library and I was like all right let me just pull up the like some of my favorites slash things that I think are amazing and I uh, no pun intended and I couldn't believe there was one issue in particular that I couldn't find that I know for a fact I own because it is so meaningful to me and um, so I I'll ha that I'm gonna go have to go back on the hunt to go find that issue somewhere because I yeah. don't think it's signed by anybody so it's not like it's in a special case or something. You have a special uh, case for your signed ones? I do. I have a little. It's 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 a short box. Okay. I just have a short box that I stuff all the all the signed ones. That way, if there's a fire, I just grab the short box and then I run away. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. My only self-imposed rules were um, it had to work on its own. Like even if mm -hmm. it's an issue I loved as a part of like a multi-issue arc, yeah, that issue had to work by itself. Right. 
I like that uh, idea. Yeah, I, yeah. mine uh, in, incidentally ended up being that way as well. And uh, and I also kind of I don't know how you'd put this, but I uh, I, I waited anything with Stan Lee and Steve Ditko because if not, let's be honest, the whole list might just be Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I yeah I did not include, and I guess I could off the top of my head just include things like ASM or Amazing Fantasy fifteen, Amazing yeah. Spider Man one. Um, any introductions of you know pivotal characters like the introduction of Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, etc. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, speaking of, like, it's not on my top ten. If we mm -hmm. go far enough, it absolutely is like on there. But yeah, do you have a favorite book from the Stanley run? Not before we start the list. Um, there are they all kind of blend together for me where I'm like, because each one is an introduction of a villain, right? So, so yeah. it's like, here's the introduction of Chameleon was Amazing Spider-Man 1, there's Electro, there's Doc Ock. Uh, I, I think the Doc Ock one is one of my favorites from back then. Um, I think that it is this, I don't remember if it's the same issue, but there's one in which Peter and Flash Thompson, their, their rivalry finally comes to a head. And so they have to box. Yeah, And it's one of those things where I didn't believe that was a thing. It was literally a, a, a concept in their Midtown High uh, system where, all right, we got these two hotheads. They want to they wanna hash it out, put some gloves on them, stick them into the gym, and have them beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, is this a thing? And I asked my father, who grew up in the city, who was around way before 1964, and was like, is this a thing? And he's like... I mean, kind of. Most of the time, we just beat the hell out of each other after school. Unofficially. Yeah. 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 But uh, but we definitely had like access to those tools, and you could use them recreationally. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess that counts. But I, I always love that sequence where uh, Peter like knocks out Flash when he realizes like halfway through punching him, oh my god, I'm going to kill this guy. And uh, I don't remember <laughs> if that's the same one as the one where he also gets unmasked by Doc Ock, but it's uh, getting unmasked by Doc Ock in this first adventure and knocking and almost knocking out flash Thompson, or ki almost killing flash thompson but settling for knocking him out by rolling his punch was uh two standout moments and i thought they were in the same issue but i'm sure they're not that's that's the problem with stan lee steve ditko books is for me i'm like oh man i love that moment when he traps sandman in a, in a vacuum cleaner or you know he uh or or liz allen you know mournfully looks over her shoulder and wistfully imagines herself with peter you know oh that's every other issue yeah. um so I, I, yeah, I don't have a favorite, but I do. I think the Doc Ock one is one of my favorites, and whatever issue, I think <laughs> the it Flash should be thirteen for me. The uh, the first one with Mysterio. I don't know Ooh. why. There's just something about that, and there's something about like every time that's translated, like that one and the the first issue with the lizard. Yes. They don't bother to mess with it too much when they translate it. It's like they got this one right right out of the gate. Kind that's of that's true. I never really care for Mysterio stories. I just I, I they don't I. I I don't know if it's about deception or perceptions. It's like, oh, you think one thing and it's the other thing. I don't know. I'm always like, eh, you know, okay. I'd just rather see him fight the scorpion. I'm really interested to see, uh, we'll get started now in a second. I'm just really interested to see how wildly different our things are. I feel like, I feel like there's going to be a tiny bit of judgment, but we'll be kind to each other. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be judgment on your side. For no, 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 oh, no. I, I, at, at this point, I've, I've, I've really tempered my, my feelings about like, spider-man and people's ownership of him he's he's the mickey mouse of marvel he, oh, absolutely. everyone has ownership or feels ownership over that character they have a lot of ideas about who spider-man is and and what he means and as long as they're like as long as they're not like i loved uh spider-man web of death when he murders somebody you know and it's like he, he didn't really but you know I, I i know once they found out that he didn't actually kill them with his webbing i was i was off or people who love superior spider-man because they're like finally spider-man can murder people i'm like that's that even know. a spider-man comic right exactly like, i i mean it, it is only as in, in 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 every cosmetic way yeah and the fact that it has like the same uh you know, supporting cast but it's not Spider-Man, or at least it is a Spider-Man, but it's not the Spider-Man. The Spider-Man has, I think, a bunch of tenants that make him who he is. But you know, but I know that that's that that has evolved and changed over the years, and so many yeah. people have so many different interpretations of what Spider-Man is. Look at those Spider-Verse movies. Oh yeah, the, they're amazing. Ten thousand characters on screen, and everyone has a favorite. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Who starts? Who do, who does number one? Um, I'll start. Why not? I'll just kick it Perfect. off just because I have it right here in front of me. Um. I think one of the best Spider-Man comics in recent years, at least, is Amazing Spider-Man 500. That's on my list. 
right? That's, it's that's on my list. Yep. Yeah. Uh, J.M. Straczynski, John Romita Jr., John Romita Sr. Uh, this is uh, such an incredible issue, and it is the culmination point of the Happy Birthday arc, which I believe was two or three issues, And but, th- but this is the end. And it yeah. is the epitome of it, so it doesn't... Re- you don't even need to really read the setup for it. You just know that the future's doomed, Peter has to do something about it, and he has to relive his uh, greatest adventures and failures to, you know, reach the present. Um, it has everything I like and want in a Spider-Man comic. Same. It is, it's, it's Spider-Man being himself, true to himself. It reiterates his character. It echoes his morality. It cements him firmly in the Marvel Universe while also not making it a Marvel Universe book. You know, like, he has a few... F- they, like friends he has a f- couple of standouts dr strange and he have a interesting if not strained relationship that i enjoy seeing on this uh display um it also of course puts his relationship with mary jane on full blast and that really means a lot to me yeah. um but we also get a couple of highlights we have that great moment with him meeting mysterio for the first time and he's like he's so exhausted from his adventure that he's just like all right give me one second Myster- this is one minute where i can actually like just take a second and get a breath because you are lame <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's yeah and of course like the the moment with uh you know five minutes with uncle ben uh, yeah. everything about it is working for me there there's an ongoing theme with mine uh that one was further down my list it wouldn't have made the top 10 but it's sure. it was up there you know what i mean yes. um but there, there's an ongoing theme with quiet moments with me so quiet right. moments with a member of the supporting cast uh it's a theme that you'll it pops up on the list a lot, but that five minutes with Uncle Ben made that issue for me. One hundred percent. Yeah. No. Uh, I love those quiet moments as well. That's that's something you'll you'll find is a is a common theme with me as well. Um, I'm the guy who during the theatrical release of Superman Returns got up to go to the bathroom when Superman was fighting the chain gun, which is one of the most spectacular moments in the movie, so that I could catch the scene where Superman and Lois are talking to each other and reconciling. I was like, oh, but what's gonna happen with Lois? Yeah, you know, and they're like, but did you see the bullet hit his eye? I'm like, no, I missed it, but I saw it in the trailer. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I like those quiet moments myself as well. Yeah. (laughs) All right, over to me, I guess. Yeah, Uh, yeah, please. This is a weird issue for my (laughs) number one pick. Uh, Peter Parker, the spectacular, the spectacular Spider-Man number 114. Okay, I have um, that issue, but I don't remember what's in it. So please, by uh, by Len K- uh, Kaminsky and uh, Joe Joe Borowski. Okay, um, the artist again, like two names that you don't see pop up a whole bunch in Spider Man, but it's it's just it's a very simple from this era Spider Man story. This kind of done in one. There is a guy he is robbing Peter Parker's apartment, just doing the lock picking stuff. Mm-hmm. And goes in and just steals a random box. This is during the black suit era. And it's yes. his old costume and web shooters. And then he goes out to rob banks as Spider-Man. And it's just <laughs> this. Uh, and it's, it's, he's not a crime boss. He, mm-hmm. he messes up and he learns that being Spider-Man actually isn't that easy. And P- Peter has to save him from other people that would hurt Spider-Man. And the police <laughs> get involved. And it's this. And by the end, the guys learn the error of his ways. And he's like lock picking professionally like to let people in and he helps get the cop who's been chasing him back into his apartment and they have a good mm. chat about like society and shit like that and yeah it's just, i love that <laughs> yeah it's just a very simple like street level like there is no big bad in this issue there is nothing like that and i love it when spider-man is a friendly neighborhood spider-man yes and I feel like you can pick up this issue, give it to anyone, and be like, this is why I love Spider-Man. This is right. not the flashiest, this is not the best, but I love it when they do this. Absolutely. That's also one of the most, that is an incredibly iconic cover. That is one of um, the few that I have that's like in a poster book, yep. where it's like, this. they're like, this is a this is a cover. Um, it's, such a, it's such a spectacular, it's just him running up the wall, both fists blared, and yet it doesn't imply what's happening in the book at all. It's it's before it's time because like during the JMS era, you would see that cover scheme all the time, which is just oh, yeah. Spider Man on a building, nothing to do with the issue. Yep, has nothing to do with the issue, just draw Spider Man. Yeah, that's the entire that's like a good ten issues of JMS's run where it's just to have Mike Deodato Jr. just draw yep. Spider Man or J uh Scott Campbell just draw Spider Man. 
Yeah, it's almost like you can play a game where, like, what issue is this? Take off the number and be like, random shot of Spider-Man cover. Which issue is this? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that, yeah. that's a toughie. Yeah. Um. Okay, so this is one of, uh, one of my favorite slash. I think it's an incredible issue that works on so many levels and nobody really t- talks about it. This is Spectacular Spider-Man 21 from the Paul Jenkins era. Okay, that's going to be uh, interesting. Spider-Man plays poker with the, with, with the crew. He never is invited to these poker games, but now he is. And uh, so it's just Spider-Man interacting with those characters. Kingpin shows up and he's like, this is, this is, this is a friendly game. I want in. And so they have to play him and Spider-Man and Kingpin face off, but in a game of poker and uh, you know, and he takes the money and he uses it to like, he donates all the winnings, I think to charity, but it takes a little bit to buy Mary Jane roses. Yeah. It's just it it is a no punch thrown book. And like it's, it's Jenkins just screwing around. Like you could tell, like Paul Jenkins is like, I know that the big one is the JMS run, but I'm doing something special over here. But it, it gave him the freedom to do all kinds of stuff that like nobody remembers or talks about. <laughs> I found that when I was going through a lot of mine were were non-amazing Spider-Man, and it's like, look what they can do over here while no one's looking. Absolutely. No, so few of mine are amazing Spider-Man. And it's because they are able to get away with more. I mean, so much of the black costume saga is over in spectacular. Um, everything with um, JMD Mateus is basically in spectacular. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but it's just a little fan favorite of mine. But I, I think that if any Spider-Man fan was like, oh, I don't know. Or if, if you're a burgeoning Spider-Man fan, read this issue. You'll be like, oh, oh man, I love that. And it's a great moment to see Spider-Man as a peer uh, yeah. with, with the rest of the Marvel Universe. That's not awesome. Uh, that is very funny. It comes my next pick is from the same run, uh, which is uh, interesting. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number twenty-seven, the ah, last issue from that run. That was a tough one. I I literally I, I came across it when I was grabbing this, and I'm like, nah, I don't want to overdo it with the spectaculars. But that that is a uh, yeah, that is a that's a that's a fantastic issue. Great art and beautiful yeah. writing. And and again, not a punch thrown, just Spider-Man at Ben's grave and flashes back to something that you don't see very often, which is Ben and Peter interacting when Ben was alive and he's not being an inspirational mean. He's not a bumper sticker machine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like so often when you see Ben, it's just he's giving good advice and that is all. Yep. And it's they're 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 building stone. It's like it's like Paul Jenkins had a secret pitch for Calvin and Hobbes because <laughs> the whole thing it is just seems like what if Ben and Peter were Calvin and Hobbes pranking Aunt May with snowmen and she just kept calling them a bunch of twits. Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> I love seeing Uncle Ben having fun, you know, when he's not getting shot, you know. Right, exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh it's it's never a question why he inspired Peter, but like I always wondered why he loved him. I mean, other than he raised him, like, yeah. why did these two like each other? When you read this issue, it's very clear that these two love each other and that they have oh, yeah. a little relationship. Absolutely. No, that, that is, it, it's also a really sad, it's a, it's a really melancholic issue because it's the end of Jenkins' run. He's, like, unceremoniously off the book, and the and the title will then be ended and folded into Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. And I think that was also at the exact same time of one more day. So like you're feeling this kind of finality, like, because I think that at that point, either that either it was at one more day or cause I remember they, uh, they were like, yeah, we're canceling every other Spider-Man title. We're folding them into amazing. And then amazing is going to be coming out three times a month. Yeah. And that was all during brand new day. And it was like, so you felt this kind of like end of an era. Yeah. And, uh, and that's yeah. And a, and a beautiful cover as well. I feel like that's, I feel like they canceled that a couple months before One More Day and didn't actually yeah. produce a One More Day issue for that volume because I think that actually is the last issue. It is. Yeah, it's, def- it's absolutely the last. Yeah, you're right. No, they canceled Spectacular and then the other three titles, titles of Spider-Man were One More Day. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I like because it means that run was spared an inclusion in One More Day. Absolutely. Yeah, no. Thankfully, One More Day didn't get one more issue. Speaking of which, is One More Day on your list anywhere? Believe it or not, no. I uh, I must have forgotten to put it. I there. know. Um, Weird. Yeah. Weird. I used to have that book in my like room for a long time as a reminder like that 
there is no story that is stronger than mandate yep. and like editorial oversight. And so like, don't forget that like, you know, as, as, as strong as your dreams are and your will can be like, there's always a bigger fish and you should be careful. Like, so yeah, but that was a darker time in my life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, now it's just over that there. is such a weird, you know, I've heard you tell that story a few times. Yeah. Uh, and that's such an interesting moment to me because it's like, that is your version of like when the soldiers came back, like the Roman soldiers, they would have someone behind them whispering in their ear going like, if all men are mortal. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Trying to de sow deception in their hearts. It's yeah. uh yeah, that's what that book does. Yeah. It does strange things to people. Yeah. Over to you. Uh, I don't have it on me. It's, over there, but Ultimate Fallout number one from uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley is the uh, final. It's for me. I, I I don't need to read any more Ultimate Fallouts except for I guess number four because it's the first appearance of Miles Morales. But that was the end of uh, Ultimate Spider Man for me yeah, yeah. for a while, and uh, it was such a tearjerker of an issue. Yeah, and uh, you know, all the, obviously the culmination of of, of a run. The entirety of, of Ultimate Spider-Man up to that point kind of finishes here. Yeah, you could stop reading forever and be like, "That's it." He gets a he gets a funeral and his loved ones move on, except for Mary Jane. <laughs> it's also kind of the end of the Ultimate Universe in a weird way. Like for a yeah. while, I, I don't know, you read Wizard back in the day, so did I. But they oh, yeah. were always playing with like, "Hey." At any point, will the ultimate universe just take over and be <laughs> the universe? Yeah, yeah. And that That's is the point when they it. were like, no, no, we're going left field kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the ultimate universe. And uh, even if I didn't read a lot of it, I only really stayed in Spider-Man, but I would occasionally stray out and read other things. But they never really appealed to me the same way that Spider-Man did. And seeing the ultimate universe through his lens was always the way I wanted to look at it. And uh, but I always like that universe, but I would I can't even imagine them being like, oh, yeah, no, it's doing it's doing so well. Let's overlay the main Marvel universe. Like, oh. Yeah. But I can imagine they had the same conversations when they made Heroes Reborn as well, where they were like, oh, man. Yeah. Like this is going so well. Jim Lee's art is so good. Remember when it was good and we used to pay him pennies on the dollar. Uh, but yeah, Ultimate Universe is a cool place. And I like am sad that it's struggling to return. It'll be back. Yeah, it'll be back, but I wonder in what form and who's going to run it. And I doubt it'll be done with as much coordination as it had been when it was created in the first place. But you're right that this issue feels like kind of a, a funeral for the Ultimate Universe in as much as anyone's real love and interest in it, because it would eventually just smash into another planet and die. Oh, yeah. So. And, and if, even before that, I would pick up random like just like, oh, what it's it's when I fell off the ultimate universe. But I would like pick it up randomly or read articles about it randomly and be like, President Captain America, what are they <laughs> doing over there? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Like that's a, that's a pitch that I would read. Um, So I'm I'm OK with it. But it's just like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Uh, There's also a great sequence in which um Aunt May like really sees the impact of her son and i'm like there it is like, yep. you nailed it the scene with her, with her and the little girl that she was uh, that re that spider-man rescued from a fire it's right up there with um the issue where uh j jonah jameson turns heel on spider-man when he's like stuck under under the water and he sees spider-man saving everybody in that spectacular Stuart eminent like two-page splash yeah uh, just just incredible stuff but uh, this issue in particular, I'm like, that was the one where I, I never cried as hard as I did when I read that issue. Yeah, absolutely. But like props to like side tangent from that yeah. same double page splash mm -hmm. props to every like contractor in New York City because huh. everything is watertight. Like whole Daily Bugle, Bugle building is underwater and Jonah's just there perfectly fine, breathing yep. air, looking out like he's in an aquarium. I'm like... <laughs> Who waterproofs the fifty second floor? What are you doing? Right? Yeah, I would, I would, I would hop to it. I wouldn't trust the integrity of those windows. No. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, my this thing. This is my first amazing again weird issue. Uh, yeah, amazing Spider Man number two forty three. So we're going mm. back a long ways. Okay. Uh, this book and I have a weird history. Uh, so back in the day, we talked about this when you were on my program. I didn't, Marvel was so bad at marketing, I didn't <laughs> realize they still made Spider-Man comics. 
Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> I, I was watching Spider-Man the Animated Series. That wonderful mm -hmm. thing. You got the Spider-Versary. Spider... Spider-Versity, yes, with Thank DJ you. of Only Stupid Answers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been checking out that. That's wonderful. I'm reliving Thank it, you. watching that. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome rewatch show. Yeah. But, like, this I I didn't know they still made Spider-Man comics, so I was under the illusion that they were doing direct adaptations, and that oh. I could just pick up every key issue that was adapted and have sure. all the important issues. Mm. And for some reason, I looked at this cover in my local secondhand bookstore and thought hmm. that was one of them. Okay, uh, I thought that for some reason. So it's my first no punches or very few punches. Like he stops a couple muggers issue. Yeah. And it's just the issue where he is trying to juggle everything. He's swinging around the city, trying to juggle life as Peter Parker, life as Spider-Man. Oh, I'm dating Black Cat and also Mary Jane's back in my life because she's always coming and going and this yeah. and that. And I'm in college and something's got to give. And at the end, he makes probably the wrong choice like <laughs> from, a, from a, a certain perspective and decides to drop out of college. Yes. That's the That's right. issue where he does it, and Aunt May's pissed at him for, like, years afterwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it's just this moment of, like, it, to me, as a young man read, picking this up, it was this uh, moment of, like, oh, man, your hero made what's probably the wrong choice. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's kind of fun because also, it, well, it really tests your metal, right? Because he's like, he's like a uh, an idol, and he's he's supposed to be the moral example and then you find yourself at, at odds with that with that decision and that makes you question your own morality or your own decision making and it gives you this uh real human adult moment or your first like one of the first adult moments you know where you're like i don't think i agree with my with with the person i uh, look up to or that i'm like emulating and it's like that's kind of cool that's a cool moment yeah and he he stayed he stayed dropped out for a very long time. Like it was post clone saga before he re rejoined college or whatever. Yeah. 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 No, it's he's <laughs> yeah. Well, cause they were like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like I can imagine the creators being like, he's still in, like, we're still doing this. We're still doing the school thing. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's a great one. I like that. That's a, that's a fan favorite one. Um, Let's see. I've got this one. <clears throat> this one's a weird one. It's definitely not one of the best ever, but it certainly has some of my favorite stuff in it. Spider-Man Unlimited number one. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, Spider-Man Unlimited number one represents something. I. It's, I believe, the debut for me as a reader of comics of a new Spider-Man title. I'm yep. like, oh, a new book. And it's an anthology book with a bunch of stuff. They were like, ah, the annual thing isn't working for everybody. But listen, what if we just published, like, I think it's every month. Uh, quarterly. They did every quarter. There, there you go. Quarterly. There you go. But like every every quarter, they'd be like, let's put out this, this ultra-sized Spider-Man book. And it has a couple of stories in it. And use it as a way of being like, this is this is the beginning of a massive Spider-Man event. I think this put Spider-Man on a lot of people's radars back in the nineties when it otherwise was like a fan favorite character where like a lot of very heavy drama stuff was happening. It was a lot of like David Michelinie just playing with Spider-Man's live uh, and, and, and loved ones being like, Oh, will they, won't they love marriage parents? Who knows? But this is like an event. And they yep. were like, this is going to be 14 parts. It starts here. Get on the ground floor. Also, fan favorite character Carnage is in a big way. Carnage kind of explodes onto the scene in a way where you're like, this is one of the first highest profile moments for a Spider-Man villain. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a shame that Maximum Carnage would only court the lowest profiles Marvel heroes, but I guess then it gives them a chance. You know, if Firestar is fighting Carnage, maybe he might win as opposed yeah. to if the Fantastic Four get involved. But um, this also has a number of other fantastic stories in it that I love and that are lost to time because I found uh, somebody sent us a True Believers, uh, which is a reprint of like key issues of Marvel. And they made a True Believers of this, which I was like, really? Yeah. Like, that's how nostalgic we are. There aren't um, enough copies of that out there. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you could get it anywhere. Uh, yeah, you could yeah. pick this up for a song. But um, I... 
I, I picked it up, or at least I was sent it, and when I opened it up, it only had the Carnage stuff. It did not have the uh, Mark Bagley drawn Terry Cavanaugh written cardiac backup, uh, but which I could take or leave. The thing that really is standout for me is the Mike Barr, Jerry Bingham playback story, which is at the surface, a Spider-Man versus Scorpion story. But you don't even know that until the last two pages. Yeah. Spider-Man wakes up in his bedroom and he's 15 again. And he remembers everything. And he's like, Aunt May, Uncle Ben, like, I'm I'm married. I'm Spider-Man. Like, but he doesn't know what to do. And it's it's time travel in a way that I have never quite seen again in any other like form of fiction where he's just kind of like observing it like a scientist. He's like, all right, like, uh, is it Mysterio? Have I, you know, is my body in some kind of tube? Like what's going on here? Then he's like, but I smell, it smells real. It feels real. Like, I remember this. He's like, things he forgot are coming back to him. And so he's just in it. Like he's so present in that moment. Like he goes to school. He does the science project they're working on. He doesn't notice that Flash Thompson does a, you know, like sabotages his experiment. And he falls for it again. He's like, yep. I'm a 30 year, like I'm a 26 year old man. And I'm, I'm still falling for high school pranks. Like what's wrong with me? But he doesn't think that because he's just like, he's just so wrapped up in those moments. And it isn't until his biology teacher is like, Hey, we're going to do it. Uh, we should dissect that spider that bit you. That he's like, Oh my God, I have spider powers. Like he doesn't even, he doesn't use them at all in the past. He doesn't go to the wrestling match. Instead. He's like, I got to stay home and I got to protect uncle Ben. Yeah. And, all that happens and it's it, it's it's really really cool and you watch uncle ben like step in and protect peter and instead P he dies as a result of peter like he 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 pushes peter out of the way and get catches a bullet and uh and immediately peter is like i wish i had one more chance and i'm like you just had one more chance like you just yeah, yeah. you spent the whole issue and it's like it's such a great issue and the the art is so <sighs> different from any normal spider-man comic especially one being made at this time yeah that uh you know the marriage of spider-man you know grounded in reality and revisiting his past like along with this like deeply serious like art is just, it's just a really great story and um it's so forgotten nobody talks about it and it's yeah. like it's 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 a great distillation of who he is even though mike barr wasn't really a big spider-man writer no. and um crap what was the other thing oh uh and, and he fights, and it turns out it's just a fever dream from being hit in the head by concrete because it's fighting Scorpion. Like, it, That's he bizarre. doesn't even go back in time. Like, it's really cool. It's yeah. it's a really cool story. So definitely go check that out because, like the True Believer reprints, I feel like whenever I read Spider Man Unlimited, I go like, okay, main story and yep. flip, 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 flip. Same. Oh, I always did that. But yeah. when you're a kid and you spent, God, how much was this? I want to say it was probably like a buck and a half. Oh, four dollars. Yeah, three ninety five. If you spent three ninety five on a book, that's like two or three books. Yeah, so yeah. you better read this damn thing. And as you can probably, you can't tell from here, but like it is well worn. I read this thing cover to cover. So it's like actually you read... your cover for your issue from a kid. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if you read this, you know you'll read the Carnage stuff and you'll just be hyped for the next issue of Carnage. Even though, of course, like I don't know, there's probably like three issues a story in a 14 issue arc but uh because it's just how many how many times can we go to the statue of liberty and watch venom be like hung from us from from the ceiling and dangled over fire or they shoot carnage they almost win and then he doesn't you know and then he gets away Ugh. but yeah. uh but there's so much of that you can read before you go all right fine i'll read the backup i'll read the cardiac story and uh you know and while i didn't really care about the cardiac story i was really interested in that uh in that flashback issue uh, it, Maximum Carnage is an interesting spot for me because it's like the height of like the 90s weirdness. Excess. Yeah, excess <laughs> is the right word. But it's also like, it's to me, and maybe I'm I'm wrong in looking at it this way, but to me it's like with the Maximum Carnage with the logo part one of 14 new title launching. To yeah. me it seems like their Marvel's attempt to copy what Batman had done over with DC with the night 10 nights of the beast. Oh yeah. Like, and Marvel's never been able to get the graphic novel game on the go in the, in the same way. No. So it's, it seems like their way of trying that and falling probably just short, but at the same time, 
who remembers Maximum Carnage versus who remembers Ten Nights of the Beast? Yeah, like, nobody really talks population. about Ten Nights of the Beast. Well, and it's interesting for me. I think that uh, Ten Nights of the Beast, you know, being one of the first, like one of the earliest um, attempts at being like an in continuity graphic novel like pitch, yeah. is um, I uh, I want to say that Denny O'Neill is at the you know at at, at the on the front lines of that idea because he was very interested in gra original graphic novels and getting them out there and having full complete stories. Like, so people could just go buy them and pick them up and get the next one. And legends of the dark Knight is why that exists. But as you, as you pointed out, like, you know, as you said, 10 nights of the beast, that story is in continuity. It's in within the pages of the book. And, but they changed the covers and the, and put the, you know, the, the extra logo, the extra yeah. logo on it. Um, I think that they were mostly concerned with just, selling it and hyping it in the moment that actually it's funny to me i think like 10 nights of the beast or in continuity eventing that marvel or the dc was doing was their attempt of aping off of what marvel's doing oh like yeah Mar like marvel is an old hand at that but dc and batman in particular was like doing the marvel thing where they're like oh no within the pages of the book you're reading right now there's a big event happening yeah. um although i think that you're right as far as uh Nightfall, I think, in fact, is Spider-Man in a big way. Like, if it weren't for Nightfall, we probably wouldn't have gotten the Clone Saga. Yeah, no, probably not. That, I think that was their attempt at uh, doing the big kind of shake up, mess yep. with the main character. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Ironically, uh, they're both uh, reviled <laughs> for their uh, excess and uh, uh, to uh, you know, and how long they lasted. Listen, at least they didn't well. do that Wonder Woman one. Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What have you got next? Uh, my next is the weirdest same, from the same era as Maximum Carnage, like within nice. two or three years. Uh, so weird synchronicities happening here. I will preface this with saying why it's in my top five. It was the first Spider-Man comic I ever got. There you go. I got, and I don't know if they had this everywhere, but where I am in Newfoundland, Canada, they had this weird thing where like at random gas stations and stuff like that they would have blind bag comics which were literal like it was you couldn't see what was inside it and it would be yeah. three random comics mm -hmm. usually two marvels one of which was spider-man and a <laughs> valiant for some reason <laughs> yeah don't know who was doing this why it was there but i had uh, it was um a, a random valiant that i don't remember the name of it was Darkhold, Pages from the Book of Sins, number two, nice. which was the first comic I ever read. Wow. And weird introduction to comics, man. Very, yeah. Uh, and uh, the other one was a Spider-Man title, thankfully, but uh, a very weird one. It was Adjectiveless Spider-Man, hey. number seven. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, which is, for anyone who's never read it, what I'm biased, but one of the better of the Todd McFarlane run, where it's just yeah. this simple the culmination of a two issue arc. You don't need to have read the first one. It's the hobgoblin is a demon. He yep. has captured a child and is trying to like recruit him into a cult manuscript. And I, I write stories about cults now, and I feel like this is book is why. There's but no way like, that didn't influence you, yeah. <laughs> I guess. He's uh he's he's trying to influence this kid. He scars him like almost like two face, like one half goblin, one half little boy. Yeah. And Ghost Rider and Spider Man are both at going after him. It's a really dark story. Uh, yeah. and and all it is is Ghost Rider wants to kill the hobgoblin, and Spider Man just wants to stop the hobgoblin, and that's the tension. Yeah. Um, which is ridiculous because if you're reading Ghost Rider, which I did years later, Ghost Rider physically can't kill people. No, but, <laughs> yeah, but never mind. The issue ignores yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it, it was a really dark issue. That on top of Darkhold really gave me a skewed vision of what Marvel Comics was. Uh huh. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and definitely that's what Marvel Comics was. In as much as it was, tr you know, it was definitely it, it had its toe in the water of the occult and skulls and fire and you know uh i want to say religious exploration in or or, or really uh exploitation yep. um 
you know, Ghost Rider Spawn. We're right there on we're right there on on the edge of the knife as far as uh, that character coming on the scene and changing Venom. everything. But definitely the Dark Hold Venom. Uh, all those stories were you know pseudo uh, religious or playing with the idea of like religion having like a good opportunity to like tell occult or interesting stories. Clive Barker was very big at that time, so you could see that as well. But like, yeah, I like um, I like that as a good. That's a great issue in as much as. You're, the art is so great yeah and no. th- and the story is so bizarre but also so simple like it's so it, it is one dimensional but you don't even really know what's happening so you think it's deeper than it is you're like what what like what what who's adam why why did he do that to his face or how are they gonna fix it they don't they don't they, they just don't and then and then Ghost Rider leaves and spider-man's like he sucks yeah yeah I um there's something and, and there's something that about it even though it's way off base and way darker in tone than anything else that'll ever come out of Spider-Man really mm-hmm. I cannot m- imagine an issue like this coming out today no but no but like at the end there's still that moment where it's like no no Spider-Man's whole like no matter what we have a problem with him we will like no matter how messed up what the Hobgoblin's done is we aren't killing him and that's an issue like it's this like no no even in the face of the worst I'm gonna keep that core about myself and that is it was interesting as an introduction to him yeah it is and 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 for an bonus it also introduces you to Ghost Rider yeah gives you that uh and he's he's never looked cooler so you know if you were ever gonna like Ghost Rider you're yeah, like through the lens of that, and and listen, listen, that opens up a whole new can of worms, and people can comment if they want to on on your thing or whatever. But besides, oh, the best Spider-Man issues of all time, uh, uh, an episode I've always wanted to do, try to get on the go, is trying to figure out how transformations work in the Marvel universe. Mm. Because if you read early Thor, this part of Ghost Rider sleepwalker anything like that it's like who who are there two personalities right. are they the same person who's in control i i don't there's... no marvel did a nice job of at least trying to explain it with like rick jones and captain marvel but even then like you know it's like they they share atoms yeah i i don't know what that's supposed to mean but you know you stick rick in the phantom or in the negative zone or in the microverse yeah. and you know they just switch places but with ghost rider like is danny catch in there yeah yeah that's a good question that's it's, interesting it's, i like that it's weird yeah. um over to you okay so uh this is arguably like over time this is yeah i remember reading this i picked it up after the clone saga ended i don't know what possessed me to do it i just saw it and said all right it's spectacular spider-man 241 uh this interesting is written, written by jmd mateus art by luke ross uh it's a very modern looking Spider-Man comic by uh, those standards that then it's uh, very evocative of like a Todd McFarlane style, especially Spider-Man. But uh, it's the like denouement of the clone saga Every, yeah. the whole damn thing, like the whole bloody affair, the miscarriage or neglect or, or whatever you want to believe uh, Ben Riley's death, Norman Osborn's rise, all that stuff. It's all over. You're so done with it. Aunt May has died. They're getting rid of the house. They're moving on. And uh, and this issue is, for me, a great jumping off point for Spider-Man. If you ever want to end Spider-Man in your heart or mind, read Spectacular Spider-Man 241. It is basically just them going like, we've been through the ringer and we'll probably go through it again, but we'll do it together. And Spider-Man takes Mary Jane on a tour of the city. Uh, There's a moment where Spider-Man's swinging through the city. He passes by the Daily Bugle. Uh, He passes J. Jonah Jameson. JJ is going to yell at him and Spidey goes, it's eight o'clock, man, go home. Yeah. The only thing that I really don't like about it is that it, it has a, it has a wrap up where uh, Dr. Ashley Kafka is going to free the chameleon. Uh, oh, and Jack-o'-lantern returns. It's after J. Jonah Jameson leaves, Jack-o'-lantern shows up. And it's great because you're like, if you want it to be your last Spider-Man comic, yeah, it still works. Just oh, yeah. don't read, don't read those chameleon issues or those pages. But like, when Jack O'Lantern shows up, you're like, Jack O'Lantern, I haven't seen you since the 80s. It's like, yeah, you know what? Like, what's old is new again. Villains are going to come back. Sometimes they'll be epic and sometimes they'll be Jack O'Lantern. Yeah. And so, but it's also a full page, beautiful image of Jack O'Lantern. You're like, yep, you know what? Like, it's never going to stop. Like, it's this will never end, but it did yeah. for me right here. And uh, Demetrius is, 
you know, he's a wordsmith. He's incredible. Luke Ross is really understands it. I bought a page of this book. It's one of the few pages of art I actually own from comics. I don't do that. I don't like to own original art because I don't want to be responsible for it. But I was like, I'm going to own a page of one of my favorite Spider-Man comics ever. Uh, so I bought like the page when uh, Spider-Man is spying on JJ and it's nice. up in the studio. And I'm like, there i got that in batman universe batman universe is flawless batman comic but uh but that's another show so yeah spectacular 241 if you haven't already read it read it especially if you're like man i hate what's happening in amazing spider-man right now i, I i've been rereading the clone saga i read that issue recently uh i i don't hate it as much as i thought i think there's something about a i wasn't reading it at the time so right. I don't have as much like what are they doing emotions wrapped up in it like those negative nostalgia emotions whatever that is you know what I mean yep. mm -hmm. and I know it ends right. you know what I mean like yes. I know that there is a conclusion so I'm not pulling out my hair while I'm reading it mm -hmm. but that that issue I I I it wasn't in my consideration and I feel like it's only it, I love that issue but I feel like it's only wasn't there because it's all wrapped up and I don't consider it um like by itself but it is it, you're, you're right it absolutely does work in that way to me it's it's the last chapter of the clone saga so it is it's, yeah yeah i think they call it rebirth by the way so it's like oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no it's uh it's 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 really good um the it, it is frustrating to me in that it kicks off one of the most frustrating unresolved plot lines of of marvel comics which is <laughs> spider baby yes which is like can can we can we do something with that no we're just gonna no. keep all right Sounds yeah good. and we're never gonna okay then can we at least let mary jane deal with the trauma of having had a miscarriage no we're not gonna do that either yeah okay. yeah yeah especially now with the um the the spencer arc kind of being like oh hey by the way the reason mephisto's doing all this is because the spider baby will be like this messiah that defeats <laughs> the devil yeah. and i'm like Okay, great. But that baby's actually still out there somewhere, presumably, even though they probably don't remember it existing because the yeah. marriage was erased. Feels like this yeah. is a plot line we should pick up. No? All right. No, we're never gonna do that. Not no. not in this universe. No. No. So what else do you got? Uh my next one is really recent, and uh I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. This is the only comic that this and one issue of Ninja Turtles that every time I talk about it, I get a bit teary, which I'm gonna try to avoid. Okay. Because that's just very strange. Uh, but uh, it's a real recent. It's uh, Peter Parker, Spider Man by Chip Zdarsky, number six. Yay! That the Zdarsky run is so good, and uh, that issue in particular. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean? Another no punches thrown. I'm just going to sit down and have a talk with J. Joe Jameson. And for anyone who hasn't read it, like, you know, God, don't listen to this. But like, <laughs> um, they're they're hashing it out finally after all this talk. And they've done that before and they'll do that again. You know what I mean? I can't wait yeah. for, for Jonah to forget that he's Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm amazed. I, I don't want done it to yet. happen. But yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, just just that knowledge that that retcon that I thought was handled so well that, hey, the reason J. Joe Jameson hates Spider-Man is because he was there that night and watched him let the burglar go and knows yeah. that that's why Uncle Ben died. And that's why he takes in Peter, even though Peter is objectively a bad photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, like all retcons, it doesn't quite fit. Like we've already gone over Jonah's motivation, stuff like that, but that's yeah. so much better. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, I like it. It's, it's a, it's a good retcon. Zadarsky is an expert at retcons. Uh, yeah. Retcons are tough because, you know, obviously you're changing a story that it's been established to fit your story, which is already inherently like a uh, felonious, but, uh, if handled correctly, can at least be justific justification for your story. Uh, but Zdarsky knows how to, like, fix it. Yeah. Or do it cleanly, or do it well enough where you don't cry foul. You know, I, I like all the different interpretations of why Jonah hates Peter or Spider-Man. I, I like the one where he's like, he's such a hero and I'm not, and he reminds me that I'm a failure. And I'm like, that's a solid one. That's as, that's as good enough as any. I'll take that. But uh, the idea that he was there and that he's like, no, I know the, like... Jo the Jameson is so intrinsically connected to Spider-Man's origins because I think Jameson is so fundamental to Spider-Man as a character. Yeah. Um, 
that's fine with me and I love it. And it's like, it's something that Spider-Man can't argue. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, I hate myself for that. Yeah. You yeah. hating, like it, it makes Jameson into a totem of his guilt where it's like, if ever I forgive myself for uncle Ben, that man will always, will never forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> but then of course, you know, that issue changes everything. And it's like, but, but in a great way where you're like, you know what? I haven't seen that and I've seen enough of the other thing. So let's do this. It's actually uh, this interpretation of Jonah slash anytime Jonah's not a complete, like hires assassins, crazy person. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? The, like, yes. like creating the scorpion and crap like that. Uh -huh. Any, anytime he's, I, I like the reasonable human being who hates Spider-Man for his own reasons. Interpretation mm -hmm. of Jonah. Yeah. Not the megamaniacal maniac Jonah. Yeah. Uh, I can never pronounce that word. But uh, <laughs> like, it's it's one of the only issues I have with the MCU Spider-Man slash Jonah. Because I'm looking at this guy on the screen and I'm going like, I'm never going to root for this guy. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, can, you can't turn this dude around and be like, mm -hmm. oh, but he's also sympathetic. It's like, yeah. you, can't, you can't base him on what you're basing him on and have me go, but I'll follow him home. You know what I right. mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a, I think there's room for Jonah in the MCU, but they'll, they'll never do it because, yeah. because they didn't show the conversation and yeah. it's, it's not on my list, but it is one of the greatest Spider-Man comics, but like it's, they didn't do the conversation. They're not going to do uh, any of that. So yeah. if they're not going to do it, then I'm not interested, but Jonah in the MCU could very easily parallel spider-man and the with great power come great responsibility mantra from the mcu if he internalizes the idea that he is responsible for may's death yeah if he's like i got power from what i did like you watch his rise and it's like weird how well executed that movie is as for all these characters when those movies have largely been criticized for a lack of characterization but yeah. um watching jonah go from shooting in his like crappy apartment to having a studio in such a short amount of time and all on the back of crapping on spider-man yeah which is basically a, a, a modern reinterpretation of jonah's rise although we don't really get to see like the daily we see the daily eagle in marvel comics because in other people's books because denise dragon it's fun we don't know that it's like da the daily bugle is a major paper yeah. entirely because of its Spider-Man maligning. Like that's not a plot point, but it is in the MCU where like Jonah learns if I exploit Spider-Man, I can get money and power and he does. And Wait. then he uses that money and power and he gets a single woman murdered. Yeah. And like, if he learns that lesson that with great power comes great responsibility and he changes from being an Alex Jones to being a newsman. Like we yeah. see that that is what changes Jonah from being that to this. And we see like, it's the or because everyone talks about no way home being like, it's the origin. It's the true origin of Spider-Man in the MCU. Well, this could also be the true origin of J. Jonah Jameson in the MCU. And we watch him become the newsman. We want him to be. I would watch that. Yeah, no, right. They'll, they'll never do it, but I would, watch they'll it. never do it. Cause it would take more than 10 minutes. Yeah. 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 You'd have to have, a no punch issue, but yeah, for like 30 minutes, and they're never gonna do that. They're never gonna do that unless they do, well, unless we show Jonah genuinely doing the news and people trusting him. Peter being like, What's people, what is what is everyone's problem with this guy? And like, so Spider Man has a real problem with Jonah the entire movie. And then at the end, we learn that Jonah learns this lesson like, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you? Do and he's like, Because I killed no, because I killed Bay Parker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that would be kind of awesome. Um, still out there, you didn't you clearly didn't write the script yet, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, that that's a solid issue, and uh, yeah, I wanted to put a Zadarsky issue in my list, and I just didn't because yeah. I like his books, but none of them have like really hit me. Um, and the Jonah issue, I think it's a fantastic one. Um, so it's a great, it's a great pick. There you go. All right, that is, I think, five from each of us. So that's our top ten. Uh, yeah. What do you do? You have others there's a little pile next to you is did you just bring the five or i brought a ludicrous amount of extras in case we had doubles i got did one more okay uh, 
I got one more uh, just because it's here, but it's Spectacular Spider-Man 200, The Death of Harry Osborn. I was wondering when that, that one's on my list too later on. I was wondering because, right? Yeah. Demetrius, Sal Buscema, Death of Harry. Uh, it, it came out around the same time as, Spe- as Amazing 375. Like I remember seeing two holographic books on the shelves and being like, one had the sexy Bagley art and the other one had like old school Buscema art. So, you know, I, I picked up both of them because they had shiny covers, but this is the one that, meant anything yeah you know, spider-man fighting venom and saving his parents who were fake robots anyway like okay it's great yeah. looking though uh but this uh watching the like culmination of the like story that dimatteis wrote up about harry is spectacular the book is good you know you get to watch these people who are like clear adults like you're seeing real adult versions of the characters that you've been watching for you know decades yeah yeah mary jane is a woman Peter is a man. Harry is a man child. And you're watching that like kind of happen where, you know, these people are grownups, but they like, but they, they still hold on to the same crap from college. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're playing pretend. And it's like uh, a book about playing pretend starring a character who's pretending to be a Spider-Man is like gold, yeah. uh, but wrapping it up with no text with the yeah. death of Harry was just, just, flawless i even know i liked the issue that much until i remember describing it to my wife and i ended up crying and i was like wow i I didn't know that book meant that much to me and it does and whenever i see it i don't get like really as sad as i used to but like if i think about it or i talk about it i'll definitely get get choked up and it's just like it is it's one of those things where it's like oh no there is dialogue he's well it's it's no dialogue at the end but when just their 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 interaction where he's like he's like you're my best friend it's like despite all of it like you tied me up and put me in a creepy dinner setting with your like you 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 kidnapped your own son like but but i love you and it's like that's really cool and uh and 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 i dare them to do anything like that now like the jonah issue is one of the most recent ones where it's like hey being subtle and talking about relationships that aren't sexual yeah neat (laughs) what a concept yeah to me there's a couple like endpoints, like you said, the the rebirth one, wonderful endpoint. Yeah. To me, spectacular number two hundred is the end, the real end of the Spider-Man college years thing, because you yeah. have all these characters. Who did he meet that first issue of college? He met Harry Osborne and Gwen Stacy. Yeah. To me, it's just like the Gwen Stacy death, where it's like, okay, that part of you's leaving. Over. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. I've never even thought about that, but that's very true. The idea that, um, yeah, because we meet Mary Jane then too. And it's like, we're watching that period end and we're ushering. And it later, like, actually what's funny is uh, Maximum Carnage 1 is the next moment. I know. That's so weird. Like we're at the, we're at the funeral. And yeah. I love that because it's a clear, defined, different. We're watching but you know the death of that period that like that like idyllic college years anything can happen like but we're gonna keep it kind of grounded story to carnage returns and it's all exploitation and money making it's just and, and, but it's neat it's neat in as much as it's like oh it's a lot more superficial like pseudo melodramatic uh i don't want to say trash but I will. Yeah. Uh, because it kind of is like, it's not like it's bad, no. but it's, it's junk food, junk food. That's what I call it. You know, it's just, it's just eating sour patch kids. <laughs> I, I'm not sure there's actually like a big, I, I, for a, a while back, like years ago, and it took me so long, it took me longer than I thought I, I wanted to read all of Spider-Man in chronological order. So I did yeah. it on Marvel unlimited because that's the only like decent way to do it. Looked up a reading list. And there was no more jarring moment, I think, in the whole 60 years than going from that issue of Spectacular to next issue, Maximum Carnage number one. (laughs) Yeah. What? And you start off and you're like, that can't be right. There had to be some space in between those. And you start Maximum Carnage number one or Spider-Man Unlimited number one, whatever, starts with his funeral. And I'm like, what? What's yeah. happening? We don't even spend time at the funeral. For contrast, we, we are, we spend most of the time also written by Demetrius, I might add uh, at the funeral for a character who appeared in two Spider-Man comics. This is mother yep. in soul of the hunter, 
where yeah. uh you know spider-man and mary jane go to this man's mom's funeral and we're there the whole damn time yeah harry's is two panels he like we see molten man he talks to liz we see a picture of harry done oh yep. and nobody goes which is really tragic <laughs> Like no one's there and people are there going like, why are we here? He was a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. He so, was yeah, the green it, goblin. What are we right. doing? But it's funny. Cause like there's, there's no reverence. And I think that's like another clear declination of like the difference between the two eras of Spider-Man. Like we went from, you know, you're my best friend, full, full page, no dialogue to eh. <laughs> carnage doppelganger Which, now that i'm thinking about it and i'm only thinking about this might be not be a fully formed thought kind of thing like that yeah. you might be able to poke holes in this right away but like for an era of spider-man that they seem to always want to get back to like that yeah. era of like hey i'm in college and i'm a young man and i'm just like single and cha-cha-cha and like that era that like quesada seemed to really want to get things back to and stuff like yes. that yeah None of that exists right now. Like, no. Gwen's dead, Harry's dead again, and they're constantly shuffling the only other character from that era, Mary Jane, out the window. Yeah. No, it's funny to see, like, um, the Straczynski era was one of the first, like, was one of the loneliest periods in Spider-Man's, like, supporting cast history, because he was like, I'm talking about Pete, Mary Jane, Aunt May, done. Yeah. Those are the characters. Like, maybe Robbie will appear in one issue, but no, 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 no Bugle, no Betty, no nobody. Uh, and occasionally you will see uh, from brand new day onwards, you know, they'll, they'll expand the cast with like Carly, and, you know, but like, and Randy again. And I'm like, man, I feel bad for Randy. Cause they keep like Nora winters. Yeah. Nora winters. Like, what am I doing? Uh, like, I, and they're all like these empty, you know, colorless bland characters that don't add anything to the world. Like, what do they say about Peter? That's, because that's what I'm here for. I'm not here for the Randy Robertson show. You know, yeah. despite the fact that, like, I feel bad for Randy Robertson because the only thing he's done of any note is marry the Beatle. And that's not a character trait. That's a thing he did. And he's been, you know, they were like, let's make him his roommate. And I'm like, he was his roommate 30 years ago. Yeah. We're doing this again. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, they need to, they don't think about it. You know, they're, they're thinking about, well, I got to make a new character. That's a villain. I got to make a new character. That's a love interest. But they don't think about like, I got to give him, I mean, even Jenkins over during the JMS period, like you have a dearth of supporting cast members in ASM in spectacular. You have an overabundance of characters that, J that, that Jenkins throws at you from the, the colorful characters that live in Peter's building to, you know, any re-explored uh, members that Jenkins remembers from his past. Because I think that JMS did that on purpose, by the way, because I think he didn't read a lot of Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. And that's evidenced by his use of, you know, oh, uh, they've never revealed Aunt May's uh, maiden name, right? Well, it's Fitzgerald now. Uh, there's a character what? with a name. I don't there's remember that. Yeah, no, he, uh, when, when Aunt May is, <sighs> Aunt May goes to the hospital. I don't remember if it's because she got shot or if it's before that. But she goes in and they, or it's a parallel of his, yeah no aunt may's mother is in the hospital it's a flashback and her name's fitzgerald and i'm like no it's not very and famously it is riley <laughs> it's like i don't know how you missed it and i don't yeah. know how your editor missed that but uh they they say they changed it in the trade but i've never gone back and looked um and they then the other one was i never caught that and i only read the trades back and there like you that. go yeah, no, in the singles, it's Fitzgerald. And he's just like, yeah, I just want to name her after F. Scott, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I'm like, well, you didn't because you because you didn't read the damn thing. And he also made Eddie Brock's first name Edwin. Because he's like, That's well, Eddie, uh, what's it short for? Have they ever said? Well, I'm going to say it's Edwin. Well, it's Edward. Oh, what? <laughs> well, I can't get over in this day and age is there are scads of like Marvel Wikipedia clones or like you, this is at your fingertips, man. It's yeah. not like you even have to ask the editor. Like, just come no. on, Comic Vine. Like <laughs> Comic Vine is actually not bad. It's got all the info there. I, I looked up uh, while we were chatting. I was like, whatever happened to Adam from Sp from Spider-Man 7? Uh, nothing. Yeah, no, nothing. They never touched I'm, that again. I'm like, okay, I'll hang on to Adam Wright. But like, I didn't know his last name was Wright until I found it on the Marvel Wiki, which took two seconds. You know, like, I, I, if you're working for these people, I don't understand why it's like so hard to just go... Have they ever done that? Yep. 
And you know why they do it? They don't do it because they don't want to be told that no, because they don't yeah. want to have to come up with another idea. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, um, these are these are some of the best, or at least some of my favorites. But yeah. I think they're you know it's funny you brought this up uh, you know as a topic, and I think it's a really important one because you know every day uh, I am pushed a thread from r slash comic books that's like how do i get into comic books how do i get into spider-man where should i start with this that the other thing and every time that anybody ever asks those questions i always see the same like four answers and they're always like uh, i want to get into the dc universe what do i read kingdom come i'm like what no, no. no. like i want to read batman what's the best batman story dark Knight returns what are you doing like <laughs> you know like don't read the someone end. did that to poor Zack snyder Oh yeah, no he. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't understand any of these characters. What do I read? The darkest ones. Yeah. Um. But he. Uh. Yeah. But uh, these these lists here are just kind of like smatterings of high quality, uh, emotionally gratifying tales that hopefully will like, you know, grab you, audience member, the same way that it grabbed us, and allows you to go in because there's one consistency throughout. And it's that outside of uh, Spider-Man Unlimited, there's no number ones. No. They're all one. in the middle of something. <laughs> what was that? The, uh, I got, there were the one, the next one down on my list, the next two are, yeah. are interesting ones. But um, uh, the conversation one was the next one down on mine where I'm like, yeah, yeah, huge one. Yeah. Uh, and weirdly, I have this weird reverence for the Tombstone arc from uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, like when he's first introduced. Yeah. Uh, so I picked the first issue of that, but I, I don't know why. I don't think they've ever, I love Randy Robinson, and I don't think they've ever figured out something to do with him since then. No. No, they've used him. Like he's appeared, but he's been a ride along. Like he's been, he's just in them. He doesn't affect change or have any agency, but like, I'm also really glad they didn't make him into a character. You know, they didn't make him into the Wraith or, you know, some, or, you know, some kind of other thing. Like he's just there. He's, yeah. he's Joe's son. And yeah. that's fine with me, but I'd rather read about Joe, <laughs> about Robbie than I'd read about uh, Randy at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two other ones I had was uh Spider-Man 50, amazing Spider-Man 50, which was uh, a, not a legacy number. I don't remember what number it really is, but it was volume two, number 50 okay uh that one's uh jr jr and straczynski that's the first issue that got me back into spider-man after quitting nice i just saw the j scott campbell cover i'm like gen 13 yeah. and i grabbed that and it was incredible i'd never read a spider-man comic like that like dialogue snap crackled and popped it was all that's about also like the start of the if i'm not mistaken that's the start of the arc where they finally bring mary jane back into the fold kind of yes. thing yes yeah, yeah. it's their reconciliation issue and i was like oh cool um so we see their relationship blossom. We see like two adults talk to each other, frankly, about love. And I'm like, that goes right up my alley. Yeah. Uh, and another one that I have is Spectacular Spider-Man 172. It's the second part of uh, a Puma story. I've said this a thousand times, but it's like, it's the first one. It also came in like a grocery bag of other comic books. I was like, ooh, here's, you know, an Avengers of Spider-Man and who knows what, Darkhawk, you know, maybe, but like, a bunch of random comics spider-man i was like i'm in even though it's bizarre sal Bachema and uh jerry conway um and that one you know spider-man and poma go on like a vision quest and then they fight in the desert it's yeah. brutal and it's fun and it's cool and nobody acts like themselves and mary jane's at home with her b-plot dealing with an adulterer yeah it's really silly and very melodramatic but i was hooked ever since and uh yeah. you know I read the first issue of that finally a couple years later, a couple years ago, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know what's weird? I got the first issue later on in a grab bag, and I was, saw the preview, like, where he's got the mask off, I think, and there's flames in the background. And yeah. And like, symbol. And I was always like, I could never find that issue. You got that issue. We, That's we right. got each other's issue. Yeah, we got we got a trade, man. Finally yeah, get, yeah. get closure we need. It's a dope ending. And it also has a really cool thing that I like, which is, uh, spider you know spider-man's in the desert he couldn't be further from his natural environment and he's fighting the puma and he's like i'm gonna die i'm in i'm in the desert i'm in my underwear this guy's a puma man he's gonna kill me and i and i've been poisoned by his claws and he thinks about when he was a kid and jerry conway retcons a story about peter when he was a child and it's when he was like at camp and he's like i don't know what it was 
but like there were six of them and one of me. I remember it like it was yesterday. He's just there were six of them and one of me. And I don't know, maybe it was the heat. Maybe I was tired, but like I just lost it. And there were six of them and one of me and they had to pull me off of them. Yeah. And I was like, that's really interesting. Like, what a cool and relatable moment for like, if you're a kid and you wore glasses and you like maybe had, you know, yeah, yeah. the odds were stacked against you. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It was a cool, uh, it's a cool little story, but it is a cool story. Stuck with me. There you go. But yeah, man. Uh, but well, yeah. So, uh, how do you want to wrap up? You want to talk like, just kind of like, this is, I like your list. I think it's, a, and I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't just like Spider-Man blue, amazing Spider-Man number one, you know, it was just like, these are all like personal and have something connection with. Yeah. You. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know how to wrap this up. I, I guess I'm saying, if you ever think of something that you want to do uh, uh, another thing like this for, I'm absolutely game and I'm not above reading to do it like i haven't right. read a boatload of hulk but i will get through it <laughs> if you're ever like yeah top 25 hulk it. the weird thing about that is man any book where it's not like a ton of spin-offs like spider-man mm -hmm. has a ton of spin-offs but if you do hulk you're just pulling from incredible hulk yeah pretty much like yeah yeah and, and it's funny like uh i can imagine you could do it with like more fan like more niche characters like i can imagine a silver surfer episode but like you know there's so that it's is one fan. I have read every issue of. Exactly. That's it's not hard to do because <laughs> there's not a it's lot. More. Yeah, took me like and, two months. <laughs> right, it'd be two months. You pick up the the main book and then like Requiem and a couple of spinoffs, but like otherwise you're good. Yeah. Um, yeah. The problem is I don't know if he's like he's popular enough. You know, that's that is that is the case. Hulk well, does help. Uh, yeah. If you ever uh, if you're uh, ever come up with anything, anything at all, I am always 100 percent game. And if I come up with something, I will shoot it over to you. But uh, please do. Yeah, everyone, get in the comments. What are your? What was your first? What was your like? What is your thing? What is your top ten? What of my top ten do you absolutely despise? Are you like <laughs> Miles Drew is off his rocker, and I will never read his books? Because he picked Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man number seven when they yeah. couldn't even come up with an adjective, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was a smart move. I think that was a good that was a good move for them making just Spider-Man. If there's just a Batman, there should be just a Spider-Man. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for sharing this idea with me and letting allowing us to disseminate it amongst the audience. Uh, you got your ideas for for comments, folks. Leave them in the uh, in the doobly doo down below. Check out uh, MatthewLadrew.com and the Right Project, and uh, we'll see you guys here on Convop Returns for more. I'm Sal, and that's Matt. So long, everybody. So long.